Dakota Bakia has brought back the buzz. Here's your look at the upcoming Texas Chainsaw Massacre Artifacts Leatherface statue. Dakota Bakia presents the Leatherface statue, expertly replicating his appearance in the 1974 film The Texas Chainsaw Massacre as part of the Artifacts line. With impeccable detail, his mask is even connected with hand-tied string. His head and left elbow are movable, giving the statue an eerie, lifelike appearance, and you can even recreate the infamous movie poster. The details are amazing, even down to the texture of blood, dust, and sebum on his apron. He arrives with a 5.9-inch steel base that you can move Leatherface freely on. Magnets in his feet provide stability. The base design is inspired by the still image in the opening of the film. Be sure to add this horror icon to your collection. something new from Kotobukiya we can really sink our teeth into. Before, of course, we get this review started and get a closer look at the brand new Artifacts Leatherface statue. How about the first thing we do is we grab this tape measure of mine and we figure out just how tall the statue actually stands. Now, I'd like to send also a big thank you to the folks over at Kotobukiya that provided this very early sample of Leatherface that we could have a look at in this review. In fact, many sites are advertising this guy pre-ordered with a release in September 2021. So we're getting a chance to look at him very, very early. We're going to move the tape measure across. We're going to stop it right there. According to then the readout, you're looking at the artifact statue of Leatherface standing 12.8 inches in height. Switching that over to centimeters. Then you're looking at the slashing statue standing... 3 or 32.7 centimeters tall. Though it may seem that the statue has the means to stand on its own, I would still recommend using the supplied display base that comes along with it, just so you can add a little more stability to the statue when you're putting it on display. The magnets on the undersides of Leatherface's boots will attach to this 5.9 steel base. Yes, you heard right, it's a steel base that they pack along with the statue. It does add on that polished finish to the piece. And as you can see in the background, there's Leatherface within the foreground, the classic narrative from the 1974 film. It's a little harder to make it out because they've used a lighter color and almost blended it in with the more tarnished, kind of distorted image of Leatherface in the background. It does say, short of me not actually being John Larroquette, the film which you're about to see is an account of the tragedy which befell a group of five youths. In particular, Sally Hardesty and her invalid brother Franklin. It is all the more tragic that they were young, but had they lived very, very long lives, they could not have expected, nor would they have wished to see as much of the mad and macabre as they were to see that day. For them, an idyllic summer afternoon drive became a nightmare. The events of that day were to lead to the discovery of one of the most bizarre crimes in the annals of American history, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre classic the fact that they were able to print that onto the base itself so he's literally standing on top of the narration done at the beginning of the film of course when you flip the base around you're treated to the font of the classic movie the texas chainsaw massacre with the trademark of the movie release and the fact it was released or by vortex with of course the director toby hooper i love the fact that they would have included this with the statue and as I said, if you pick the statue's base up, the actual part of Leatherface, very carefully flipping him up, you'll see that the magnetized squares on the bottom of him attach very strongly to the display base, guaranteeing that when you are putting this on the shelf, your Leatherface statue isn't going to fall over. Probably a good place I feel to start with this review would be obviously looking at Leatherface's head and the skin mask that he wears. Handled well, I feel, by Kota Bikia replicating the look that he has from the original 1974 film. Like in the film, the mask looks crudely stitched together. It almost has a paper look to it. Almost as if I would be able to take a light source and shine it straight through, and you'd be able to see that it's paper thin, the skin that he wears over top of his face. The amount of detail that they were able to put into just the head sculpt alone... It does have a level of depth to it, so you can see where the mask stops and his face would begin underneath all that. 
the disfigured-looking face and teeth, I should say, of his mouth, and even to the point where if you have the light hitting it just right, you can also see there's eyeballs. There's his eyeball right there inside the socket of the mask. It's dark enough that from a distance, you're not going to see his eyes all the time. But I tell you, just having the light hitting it, like right there, you're just getting a little bit of reflection coming off of those eyeballs. And I love how far and dark those eyes are from the rest of his skin mask. The coloring is kept quite dark here. The mask does have lighter areas and lighter elements to it. But generally, the overall vibe of this statue is very dark, grimy, and sweaty. I really, really like that. The head sculpt, like I said, does have head articulation, so you can move that back and forth. We'll play more of the role when you get the statue in the second way that you can display and pose them, which will play more of the role when we start moving this arm, because these arms can detach, and you can configure him in a second different way. Other things I certainly want to draw to your attention is the way that they've actually stitched together, and I should say threaded together. There actually are strings attaching the mask pieces together. The smallest detail I want to commend Kota Bakia for doing, though, and I hope that you guys have been able to see it up to this point. If you haven't, I'll draw your attention to it. He does have eyelashes. He has eyelashes on the open eye areas of a skin mask. A little harder to see, but there's eyelashes right there. We can spin this, the mask around so you can see it from the other side. He has them there as well. The very idea that they were able to put eyelashes on the skin mask very impressed that Kota Bikia went that extra little detail when it came to replicating the way Leatherface's mask looks. Of course, we can spin the statue around so you can see the mask from all the different sides. Paint is really good on it. And what little there is of his own skin, you can see is very sweaty and very dirty. That trend, believe you me, will continue as we look at the rest of the statue. In the meantime, you can see it from the back. Very nicely sculpted hair. Generally quite wet looking as well. Again, that will be a consistent trend when we're looking at the statue. And then, of course, when we're looking at the rest of the piece, the darker colors really replicate, I feel, the idea that it's hot, it's sweaty, he's got very dirty looking clothing on. What may have started to be a lighter looking shirt is now soaked and darker and gray. Even when you're looking at his arms, for example, his arms look bruised, grimy, dirty, and most definitely sweaty. I love that they added as much coloring as they did to the arms to really enhance the idea that they, that even like looking at this, this statue looks dirty. Really, really liking the way that they've done this. He does have the little trinket of the charm bracelet there on his hand. You can see right there as well. Now he does have the posability in the head, which we've already looked at, but he does also have posability in this specific arm right here. These arms detach and gives you a second way to configure the chainsaw, which we can certainly talk about right now. The chainsaw, I couldn't commend them more for because I really, really like the way that this turned out. The chainsaw is not something that he looks like he just bought. This has some, been something that's been sitting in the tool shed and I'm sure he's frequently has used. The way they've scratched the paint, there's little scratches and pieces of metal, of course, you can see peeking through the yellow. And even the blade itself looks like it's grimy and it's been used frequently. The teeth are about the only thing that seem the cleanest part of the chainsaw, while all the rest of it, very scuffy and dirty. Coloring is really, really good on this statue. Of course, we looked at the, the shirt, we looked at his arms, looked at the chainsaw, but between his shirt and the chainsaw is quite a blood-stained apron. The apron runs about the area of his calf, which is about accurate to the way it looks in the movie as well. And it's slightly more shinier the width they painted it too, giving it more the look of a different material than the rest of what he's wearing. This is the only place that gets represented by blood. Though to be fair, there is going to be a slaughterhouse blood version of this statue that's also going to be released, which we are going to be looking at in upcoming reviews. So you can stay tuned for that. The blood is all over his apron. And yet surprisingly enough, it's nowhere on his chainsaw. Maybe would have gone with a few little droplets of blood to know that at least when he was doing his carving, you would imagine that this would have been the tool that would have resulted in all the blood staining across his apron like this. We get a little bit further down, of course, he's got his cowboy boots on there as well. Even like the lower end of his pants, which normally would still have been blue, you can see get a little bit more of additional dusting of brown. So everything on this guy looks really dirty and used. 
Lastly, before we show the second configuration of the statue, I want to show you like the back detailing of his. I don't know why I want to spend so much time talking about the behind of Leatherface, but the idea that they've worn away a seated area on a statue. Let that sink in for a second. They wore away the back area as this would be the place that he probably is frequently sitting down. And it's just worn away material that they've actually replicated that on the statue is a fantastic touch on Kotobukiya's part. Seeing as I don't want to be talking about Leatherface's behind for the entirety of this review, let's instead move on and talk about the second way that you can display the statue for yourself. It will involve you having to remove the arms from the torso and move around a few things. To help with that, to guide you along your ways, they actually include an instruction sheet. It shows you how to remove the arms and how to move the chainsaw, because what you're going to attach then is the pull cord from the motor. And let me show you how that works. So we're going to put that to the side. First, the first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to detach Leatherface's arms just because you want to get access to the chainsaw, especially this arm right here, because you're going to have to remove it from the handle. This arm here can stay where it is. In fact, you're just going to move it a little bit further up, but yeah, it can just stay where it is right now. You may think it would be difficult to try to remove the fingers from the handle, and actually, no, it's not. The plastic seems soft enough that really all you need to do is pry the four fingers away from the handle or from the palm, and then basically once it gets there, just slide it around the thumb. That's it. That's all you need to do. The other thing we want to do as well is to the side of the chainsaw is obviously where the pull cord is going to be. You want to detach that as well. Just remove it. Then from there, we'll just put this down to the side for the time. Movie. Actually, let's get to the pull cord here. So we flip this around and on the inside, this normally when you get it in the packaging, this is looped around that peg. I would recommend you first finding out if that's looped around before you start pulling this because that's going to pull tight and you could run the risk of pulling the string and snapping it. So you just want to make sure it gets off of that little hook, that little peg. And then from there, you can freely pull the line out until you get the full length like this. Go then back to the chainsaw, attach it back to where you saw it, where it, where it belongs. And then from there, you can go ahead and attach this arm. Oh, before we do that, actually, just straighten this arm out. And then from there, you're just going to attach the arm like that. Bring the arm sort of around so it's getting kind of around more of the top area of the handle. And then from there, this might be the more harder aspect of things. Get the second arm back in like that. And then just sort of take the pull cord and you want to get it around his fingers. Now, this is something certainly a lot easier to do when I'm showing you guys a little closer. But again, you basically just want to pry the fingers away from themselves just enough that you can get the handle in between in between the thumb and the fingers. And again, I may have to just do this. I may have to just pause this and get this actually done. But just to pry those fingers away. And then while they're away from one another, you can see how helpful it is that the plastic's softer. You sort of need to get it in between the thumb and the fingers of the hand. Once you get the handle of the cord wedged in between the thumb and the four fingers, all then you really need to do is straighten out the arm, and if anything, maybe just bring the hand a little bit further up on the handle of the chainsaw so that you get at least the pull cord as tight as you can get it. This then gives you the look that Leatherface is starting up his chainsaw, ready to lay into somebody. And really then, from there, because he does have the posability in the head, you can change things up. You can take the head and angle it down, for example. So he's looking at the chainsaw while he's trying to start it. Or even scarier, you could turn the statue sideways and have the head of Leatherface looking up at his victim as he's trying to start up that chainsaw. And then for finishing touches, of course, we can reach off to the side and bring back in the steel display stand, which so nicely attaches via those magnets. And you've got yourself a completely different looking statue. Even though really nothing has changed other than just moving the head, the arm has still stayed the same this whole time. Straightening out this arm, bringing out the cord and attaching it to the hand instead of where the handle was before, you've got yourself right away a completely different looking Leatherface statue. As I said, Kotobuki is also releasing a slaughterhouse version, which is basically going to be this same statue, just soaked in red. 
And if you thought to yourself, well, I'm a little on the fence, why would I want to get a second version, Con considering, if you will, the fact that it does have two configurations like this. You could have the cleaner, quote, cleaner looking leather face that we've been looking at in this review with the way he was at the beginning of this review, holding the handles of the chainsaw and then taking the slaughterhouse version, which is probably what I'm going to end up doing and having him look like this, drawing the cord back. And again, because you have them on display in two different configurations, in a way it results in looking like you have two completely different looking leather face statues in your collection. When news dropped that Kotobukiya was going to be releasing an Artifacts Texas Chainsaw Massacre Leatherface from the original 1974 classic, I was really excited. Having already picked up the Artifacts Freddy Krueger and Artifacts Jason Voorhees, it was a welcomed piece to my collection. Of course, they are releasing two versions of this. This happened to be the quote cleaner of the two, the other one being a previews exclusive Slaughterhouse version. Either way, though, whichever one that you decide to pick up, if you're a fan of the 1974 Texas Chainsaw Massacre film, this is probably one of the best statues I've seen of the original look for Leatherface. Down to the finest of details, the fact that they were even able to put eyelashes in the sockets of the skin mask. I mean, that, it, it's crazy, the fact that they even put eyelashes in. The statue looks wet dirty, grimy, the way that Leatherface really should look. He does have blood, of course, on his apron, and that's the only place that he has on him. I mean, you could use the argument that that blood was there before he started up the chainsaw. Still, that being the case, it would have been nice if they just added a few little droplets of blood on the chainsaw. But I guess we're supposed to be setting the scene that Leatherface has already killed one of her friends, and now he's moving on to Sally herself. Great looking piece, though, from the folks over at Kota Bikia. This one, by the way, stated earlier in this review, is an early look. It's slated to release in September of 2021, and this may very well be one of the first reviews of this guy online. Certainly, again, I couldn't recommend this guy enough if you guys are a fan of the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre and Leatherface. A big thank you to the folks over at Kota Bikia for allowing me the, the opportunity to have a look at the Artifacts Leatherface early like this. Uh, the price point, by the way, just in case you are curious, he's slated to release September 2021, and the price points on most sites seem to be 179 180 I think for what you're getting, especially for the fact it has configurable parts in the one arm and the movable head, 179.99 is not bad at all for, again, what you're getting with the taller scale artifact statues, where they really do throw so much more of the detail into. Highly recommend it if you guys are a big fan of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre film. Any of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre films, even though I, I know I sometimes get flack for saying I like the next generation, but I mean, just Texas Chainsaw Massacres as a whole, the film series, this is a great piece to be picking up and putting on display. Uh, if you guys are new to this channel, enjoying all the content you're seeing, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below, turn the bell notification on, and keep your peepers peeled, because even though we have wrapped up the review of the Artifacts Clean Leatherface, in the not-so-distant future, we will be looking at also the Slaughterhouse version. That's going to take this look of Leatherface and hit it to the max with a whole lot of additional blood. Keep your peepers peeled to this channel, and as always, thanks for watching. See you guys next time.